So in this video I want to talk about top 5 low pokes in the game. Now I want to categorize these lows as low pokes, you know, there's some knockdown lows that are super good. But in this in this video I'm going to talk about pokes purely. So um, if you have a character that you think should be in the video, let me know. And if you think these 5 characters shouldn't be in the video, also let me know. You know, it's just a matter of opinion, is my opinion, my experience with the game. I think these moves are standish. So yeah, let's have a watch. So first slow up is Gangry is down for three. Now why I say Gangry is down for three is because it's a very fast low, like it's a relatively fast low at 16 frame. It's plus five, plus the opponents in crouch, so they can't step in one direction. But also um it's pretty much homing, so it's very, very good tracking. Like it doesn't say homing, but it might as well be. It's very difficult to step. And the other thing is, um, against some characters, you can actually space out them for three on block to be safe against most well, some well standing fours. So against some characters, it's very easy to abuse the spacing on this to make it safer. And this low just really complements the character because he has so many chunky mids to make the opponent scared of challenging it. So down for one, for example, down one plus two, down for two, back two strings. So he has a lot of mids to complement his um, down for three. And at the wall, because they can't backdash away from it down for three, he's able to loop this at the wall and it can really add on damage. So they're forced to like low parry it or challenge it. And when they do that, you know, the, his mids come in place, you know, his damper through, his back two one, then one plus two, damper one. So yeah, this low is definitely up there. Like, in terms of plus frames, safety, tracking, startup speed, and it just complements his moveset so well. So yeah, this move for sure. Next up on the list is Alisa's FC down for 3 plus 4. Now I think this low is good, it's because now it is a bit slow and it comes out of FC, but everything else is just amazing. The damage it does, it's only it does 26 damage. It's plus 5, forces them crouching while Alisa is standing, so she has a lot of options from this. You know, if they mash, she can magic 4. If they step, she can magic 4. If they um you know she has a bunch of options like jump for 4, jump for 1. Even Dumper 2 if they try to match while signing 4 for example. Now this is not the only thing that, that's good. On block it is only minus 11 on block. Meaning some characters can't even punish, can't even get a big punish on it. And also she has setups where she can make this low safe on a tech roll. To be minus 10 or make them while signing 4 is whiff. So it's a very like low risk high rewards kind of low. So it's really good. And also on hit you can actually transform into destroy form where she has a lot of scary options from this. So for example, her lows, if Alisa hits the FC Dunford 1 plus 2 and the opponent's on player 2 side, the chainsaw game becomes much scarier because they can't stack the chainsaw 1, for example. So then you have to pull off with chainsaw then 1, chainsaw then 2, which is a very beefy low. In fact, I would include these two lows in top 5 to be honest. I got a bundle FC Dunford 3 plus 4, uh, FC Dunford 1 plus 2, destroy form 1, and destroy form down too. I would just include all these three in one because they kind of go with each other. So yeah, these these all these lows are only like minus 11, minus 12. Really chunky on hit. Really good frame advantage on hit. And yeah, and makes great tracking, great damage, great frame advantage, great pressure afterwards, especially when opponents on player two sides. Since they can't step this, so they have to deal with all these options out of it. So yeah, this low is, in my opinion, I'm surprised it's even minus 11. Like, I thought it'd be minus 13 a while ago, like nerfed, but seems to be flying under the radar. So Alisa players, thank your lucky clovers. So yeah, that's it for Alisa. Your fate is already decided. So next up, in my opinion, is Safina stand 3. Now why Safina stand 3 is kind of crazy is because, okay, so it tracks one way completely. So it tracks opponent side for left completely. So. It has tracking to one side, so that's always nice to have on a poke low. The other one is, um, so it goes under highs, okay, but it can go under some mids too. It has it has some mid evasion to it, so it can actually go under some mids. And when you combine these properties with her movement, it is actually um, a counter counter as well, on top of everything. So, 
can go under highs, it can go under mids, it can counter it launch on top fish. It's only mass directing on block. And she's in a weird position where some punish some punishers will actually whiff on the character. So yeah, this this move is pretty loadish. The only thing is it's it's kinda slow at 22 frame. It's like on the edge of being seeable. But I think very few people can actually block this on reaction on consistently. And when she hits it, you know, she has stance pressure. So she has stuff like 1-3 out of Mantis or 3 if they um, don't duck. And if they try to like option select it with a size that left low parry or whatever, you can delay your options from Mantis and catch them. So it's a pretty, it's not scary, but it's a pretty annoying situation to be in, especially when it's only man starting into Mantis. And some punishers are weird on it anyway. Counter it launcher, tracks size up left completely. Uh, high crushes, it can go under some mids as well. It's pretty okay range for what it does. It's pretty good range for what it does. So yeah, I think this this low is pretty loaded, and it's definitely worth mention. So next up on the list is maybe a controversial pick, maybe, but the Mac Four from Kazia I think deserves a spot on the list. On this list, why I think so is because the tracking is insane. Like it's another one of those lows that. The homing property is not listed, but it might as well be homing. The tracking is absolutely insane. And because it's plus 4, along with Mishima jobs, means that they can step a 1 1 2 check. So if they try to step after Denmark 4, you can hit confirm the 1 1 2, which is, you know, usual, usual um, Mishima stuff. Really, really um, nasty to deal with. So um, on counter hit, it does the, the stun. Now, plus 17, nothing is guaranteed. But he does get um, a wave dash mix up, you know, do your mids, do your lows, your hell sweep, or your mids, or whatever, you know, do the one sign one plus two. Yeah, that's it there. So, you have, you know, it, it does, on Kendra, she got a little pressure mix up situation. Homing, plus four, can't step jabs. Now, another big thing is that it hits grounded. Now, why this is strong is because after his wall ender, after his wall ender, um, he, yeah, the damag four is actually a force block. You can't do ghetto kicks against it. You can't spring kick it. It hits ground, so you can't stay on the ground. So you're forced to tuck roll and block it, and that's really scary because he has stuff like wall sign three to splat you, or four four to keep pressure on, or whatever, or double one four to re splat again. So yeah, this situation, or even wall signing one plus two, I don't know. Casio players know better than I do. But the damag four hits ground it, so. That's really, really strong for Oki. Really strong at neutral because of tracking the plus frames. The only downside is it's a bit slow with no crushing. So he's, he is prone to being counter hit out of it. But otherwise, the properties otherwise are pretty like top tier, like top five is serving of a low. And that's it. I know this is like my hundredth video mentioning Shay's Denmark 2. But I just can't stress enough how strong this low poke is. No, so I think it deserves number spot number one spot low poke in the game. So why I think this is now where do I even start? So it's 18 frame, which is relatively fast for a low. It's plus five on hit. It high crushes, as you can see with the animation, high crushes. It's plus five, she's in back turn. Now nothing really truly frame traps from back turn. So what you gotta do is if they try to mash stick jab. You can sidestep with back turn and then we we'll punish them with the back turn four. And on counter hit, on counter hit, it's a it's a stun into plus eighteen, right? So she can do a lot with plus eighteen. So you can go for a back turn three as a mid option to wall splat them. Back turn down three, which is an option a lot of shy players like just to keep on pressure. Or back turn down four, which is just like a sealable. I mean, uh, risky low low poke or low knockdown, but it's, it's there for a ward. Back turn 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 to keep them in check. So yeah, and what in rage also, if Shao hits you with this in rage, the back turn mix up with the rage drive is guaranteed immediately. You have to guess right away. It's between back turn 4 or back turn rage drive. And then, of course, you can play safe with back turn 1, back turn hop kick, and stuff like this, okay? It's, it's all mind games in the end with Shao's uh, the back turn hit. But yeah, this. I mean, it also tracks to her weak side. Now, she had a problem tracking people going left against her, but that actually tracks to the weak side, which is uh, left against Shayu. So yeah, this tracks that way. So that kind of removes that weakness aspect of Shayu, as well as covering a lot of other things at once, like going under a jab with it, 
Uh, the range is nice. Force them in crouch, it's plus five. There's just such a loaded move. And unblock is technically safe against most against some characters. Sure, you can mix up the punish on the on the move, so it's like minus eight back turn, I believe. So if you try to while signing for, she still has a threat of parry to parry your while signing for. So you have to like delay your punish if you don't have something guaranteed. And of course, Shay, if you delay your punish, Shay can escape away and block in time. So it's a mix up punish on block for some characters, and it's just super loaded in properties otherwise. So yeah, I think this serves a spot on the list. So yeah, I think those are the five. Let me know if you disagree with me, if you think there's better lows. I had some men I had some worthy mentionables like Jack's FC uh, Denback one, FC Denback one, Dragonov's Den two, I had Law's Denback three, uh, there was a few others as well off top of my I can't remember off the top of my head, but those were definitely very, very, very close to making the list. Like Nina's Stenback three, Miguel's Stenback three, they're also very strong lows. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you disagree, let me know in the comments what characters you think should be here or what characters you think shouldn't be here.